there is a sparkle that Joe has. I've seen Joe fall, but I've never seen him fail. I had to get to a point where I had to forgive him for all the things he went through. He said, Grandma, this is me directing my choir now. I must say we've been waiting to tell this story our entire lives. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joseph. Happy birthday, man. Oh my God, the big 3-0, my God. Happy, Happy birthday, We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Rod. Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joseph. You're 30. Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joe. birthday man. Day, love yeah, you, Joe. Day, we love yeah. you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we love you so much. Only you would understand what we just did. I'm just so happy that you were able to um, celebrate your 30 years on this earth in such a way. I remember, you know, a couple years ago, I got a phone call around, you know, my 30th birthday and talking about how old I was and how elderly I had become. Well, sir, your cane has arrived. Jojo, I love you. I will always love you. I'm your other daddy. How would you like for me to check you out to eat tomorrow evening, Joe? Listen, I am so proud to call you my brother, and uh, I don't know really what I would do without you, man. You've been uh, truly an example of uh, what it definitely looks like uh, to walk in your calling. I'm just so proud of you uh, and the man that you've become. I'm so proud of you, man. Oh, <laughs> I'm so proud of you, and I thank God that he has kept you for 30 years. Reason Joe, at times, we would do fine. And again, again, at times, Joe and I just couldn't hit it off. But I realized that he was a child and I was an adult. And so in order for him to get himself together, I knew that I had to treat him as a child, but I want that respect as an adult from him. Being a mom to Joseph, um, was, it was a, a time of being very proud of his gifting, but also there were times when, you know, I had to be a mother and, and, and do some discipline with him. Is this a trick question? Um, okay, so growing up with Joseph um, was interesting. Joseph has uh, multiple sides. Um, multiple sides. He can be really loving and sweet and then he would do things like sing so loud your head would spin. At first, sometimes you and I just couldn't hit it off together and he got a little sassy with me and I had to get a little sassy with him but not in speech but with a switch. But just the same, I love him. I was very uh, attached, you know. Um, of course, later on with the divorce and the, and the separation, um, I didn't get the opportunity to go through a lot of the development with Joe. But as a young child, I would, you know, um, be there. So I was very proud of his accomplishments. But then there were other times we would just like watch all the Disney movies we could find and we would sit in the floor and eat cake out the bowl or I mean we just had like a really good um, I would say relationship when we were coming up 
Um, there were times where, you know, I was in his room all the time until we started to fight and they had to separate us because, you know, we're siblings. Um, but then there were also times where, you know, he would um, be doing something really new and different for his age. Watching him like grow into his gift at a really young age um, was, was cool to see and be able to witness firsthand. Um, I remember he was about two and he was um, singing. And I remember a good friend of ours, John Scott, um, I was sharing with him what he was singing and John said, no, nah, no, nah, that's just baby talk. I said, no, John, Joe is singing and I know he's singing because he's humming a tune or he's la la a tune that I recognize. He doesn't know the words, but he's singing. And that continued. Yeah, I have seen a, a lot in Joe. Uh, after he hit the age of about 10, and he loved to sing. And he also liked to participate in programs at school. My experience teaching JoJo was awesome. He was a great kid. Super talented. I met him in his eighth grade year, which I think was the last time he and I were the same height. <laughs> and I noticed him. He was a student at Oak Knoll Middle School, which was next door to Hanover. I came over and did a pyramid concert, and I saw JoJo sing for the first time in three-part harmony with an arrangement he had done himself as an eighth grader, which I just thought was fabulous. One thing that a lot of people don't know about Joe is that Joe has always wanted to wanted to be a director of some sort. He used to play with his um, his trucks and cars and align them as a choir, <laughs> and he would be in his room or on the kitchen table directing them. I came through the kitchen one night that Joseph had all of them lined it up. That was his choir, and he was directing it. He said, Grandma, this is me directing my choir now. I said, okay. And he would sit up in the kitchen there, just sing to the calls, and like he was directing them to sing back to him. That's one thing that a lot of people, <laughs> most of his close friends know that, but a lot of people don't know that about Joe. JoJo was, he was, speaking into his life since the age of five. <laughs> he was gonna be a director, he was gonna be a coach of some sort, and that's just what it is. It's yeah. been in him forever. It's in there. <laughs> best vocal coach was God and then a lot of that talent comes from a gift from our Heavenly Father. I did obviously you know coach his voice you know I especially back in those days I taught mainly in the classical style and so I've loved to be able to watch Jojo shift back and forth and be able to sing across the genres. I think my fondest memory of carrying him um, is sitting at the piano and playing worship and knowing that he could hear me. And that, that's, that's the fondest memory I have of, of carrying my son. My fondest memory, I think, is a, is a pretty clear illustration of who JoJo is. So we were competing at the old Clover Hill High School. Um, it was show choir day and we were in the finals and the audience, as they always did, went wild when JoJo came onto the stage. <laughs> and JoJo walked downstage and hushed them. <laughs> and I think, I think that is JoJo to a T right there. If I could describe Joe in one word, it would be crazy. <laughs> no, he's a loving guy. Yeah, definitely loving. Yeah. Tenacious, fierce. 
That's two. I'm going to break the rules. <laughs> Joe is faithful. There's more than one word <laughs> to describe, you know, Joseph. But I think the biggest word that I can think of is just that um, he's devoted. I would choose the word spectacular. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> What's your word? Uh, my word is shady. Oh. <laughs> Very shady. Damn. Good answer. Spectacularly Good shady. Answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I gotta choose my words right. If I could describe Joe in one word, it would probably be grand. If I had to describe Joe in one word, I'd say grand as well. But I think um, to piggyback off of what Jessica's saying, like it's grand in, in all of the best ways. Even like on Resound social media and stuff like that, like anytime we want something that's gonna grab people's attention, we're like, Joe, make a post about this because he's gonna have 75 emojis to open up. He's gonna be like, alert, PSA, everyone beware. Rare. You've never met a soul like him before it's very different and I've never met anybody like him he's like a breathing machine it's but it's hard <laughs> mm, inspiring growing up we both um, grew up in very similar situations um, and he could have gone left um, he took the things that hurt him or that were challenging and he turned them into passion for um, and like his gift. He's nothing like your other friends. He'll be with you until the end. That's just his way. That's just the way he is. I would say, so when our parents divorced, I feel like that forced our relationship to be tighter. To be honest, and I want him to know this, um, I think differently as a mother, um, I would have had my children with me. And um, I want him to know that. I want Joe to know that, you know. That was the one thing that I would have done differently is um, to have always had them with me. After our parents divorced, I think it forced us to come together and be our support system for each other. There were a lot of nights where we just kind of um, were the only people who could understand what we were going through because we were both in it together. Um, even though he was younger, you know, helping him process his emotions was, I felt like, a big part of my job. I think that was a defining moment for our relationship. We definitely just started to, like, depend on each other after that. I think I would have gotten the opportunity for them to really... Um, know me in that moment and for me to know them in that moment um, because the moments we have now are very precious more precious than, than anything imaginable but to miss out on those moments is the thing that I would have done differently so I could be in those moments with them yeah. <laughs> family and Joe is definitely family he came to us and he said that God showed him us as his godparents and I'm like what like is he really is he serious like at first I thought he was joking but he takes it seriously to the point like I have other god children but he makes it known they're not my real god children like he's my godson like there are no other godsons and I'm like Joe no this young man is my godson no no god mom I'm your godson so he is our godson. 
and it's just been a relationship that has grown over time and continues to grow and we just continue to love him more and more. And I will say, um, I'm honored to say that um, I'm his godfather. Um, he's, he's such a gift to the body, to this world. To the world. I definitely will tell you, I knew for a fact that I was going to be my brother um, years and years ago, but 14 years ago. And it's just like, just to like see that we literally have made it through some thick and thin. And it's just like, wow, I'm just, yeah, I'm grateful to have him as a friend. So I can see 10, 20, 30, 40 more years from now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what does it feel like being Joe's Fry to Die? It's not just one set feeling. You can't just be like, oh, it feels good. It, it's, it's cool. It's more than that. I, God knows, have seen life totally different. Totally different from being his ride or die, his ride. I've seen Joe in so many different elements that a lot of people would naturally see, you know, and he's seen me in so many different elements, but just that he's a strong man. He is strong. I've seen Joe fall, but I've never seen him fail. I know he looks up to me like as a, as a father figure, but the relationship I have with him, um, I didn't have that with any younger, you know, siblings. Yeah, so he brings, he brings joy to know that I have somebody around me that I can talk to. I'm gonna say an area he helped me in. Let me let me do that. An area he helped me in is forgiveness. And I'm gonna be transparent on this one. We went through a phase with Joe where our relationship was a little rocky. Oh, yeah. And um, it it hurt me to my core because I couldn't understand like why is he being like this? Like, why is he being so nasty? <laughs> it was crazy because I'm like, this is supposed to be our, you asked us to be your godparents and you know, now you're out here. But then I had to remind myself at that time how young he was. I didn't realize, I, sometimes I forgot how young Joe was because of his gifts and how advanced they were. And I had to learn, I had to get to a point where I had to forgive him for all the things we went through. And when we came back together, our relationship was actually stronger than before. And since that time, I think it's just, it, it's continued to grow. And we've continued to go deeper in our relationship with each other. And we built this trust um, that I think is unmatched. And I just, I thank God for it. It's something that I, I'm so grateful for. <sighs> yeah. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of uh, proud moments. I think the uh, whenever he would get up and um, sing, I was extremely proud. But when he acknowledged where his gift came from, that it came from God, I was most proud of him. This season, this our season. proudest moment of Joe so far has been this season of his life. To see him chasing after his true dreams and desires has been amazing. And even those moments when he um, has, may have hit a hard place and he learned a lesson and then he talks about going from one level of growth to another, just to hear that conversation, the conversations we've had, um, that has been my proudest moment to see him mature from the young boy now to the 30 year old man. Yeah, you know, as an entrepreneur myself, to see what he's doing, I'm so proud. Uh, and I'm, I, I, I really, really am proud of him oh, yeah. because a lot of people are scared to do this. The thing that makes Joe different uh, than any of my other friends, it would have to just be um, the brotherhood that I have with him. Like, um, he's probably the only person that I can truly say uh, he's been there for moments that probably, um, yeah, they've been there for moments that no one else has been there for. You know, uh, when I lost my grandmother, uh, he was the person I could call on. When you go through certain things in life, you just know, start knowing for a fact, hey, this is just somebody who's forever. So yeah, for sure. That definitely made a difference for me. Yeah, I've known Joe for so long and it's like, 
I've kind of seen him grow through different stages of his life, but I think for his entire life, that I've seen. Joel is really funny. And I think people see him in Hilarious. these professional settings and see him, you know, teaching, leading and stuff like that. And he has a good poker face. But when I tell you, he's just really funny. Like from the stories he tells to the jokes he makes, like, and just some of the ways that he sees things, mm -hmm. it's just, it's only, only Joseph Bernard Clark could, only could see things this way. And <laughs> I just love it. Joseph. Out of breath, so I had to like calm myself down. He's like channeling his ancestors. <laughs> dissecting songs of mm -hmm. dice, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, yeah. that, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> the funnest memory that I had of Joseph. Uh, when he was a child, <laughs> was that Joseph decided one day that he was going to leave home. So he <clears throat> goes across the field. So I said, where is that child going? He, I called him. He didn't look back. He didn't say anything. So nothing for me to do but hop in my car and go and overtake him. Most embarrassing moment number one. We, grandma was like, we were walking around the house as usual on a Saturday or something like that. And like, Joseph has this thing where he sings really loud. I mean, you've heard him, he's loud. So the doors would be closed to his room. That was a rule. If you sing, your door has to be closed because he was so loud. So he got mad and when grandma was like, you are too loud, you have to go outside, just go outside. So he went outside. He sung so loud that we heard him all the way outside. Like he was staying in the middle of the house. He was just like really, like I think he was just inconvenienced. Anything was cold outside. <laughs> so he wasn't happy that he had to be out there. So he was making a point. So I'm like, yeah, everybody believes Joseph's singing is great. I'm like, it can't, but this also can be a weapon. Okay, that's like, it was scary sometimes. <laughs> you don't want me Take to it away. <laughs> I'll start it off. Our, you said fail moments are <laughs> most fail. First of all, Ooh. we have many, many fails. That is Many of one. them. I must say we've been waiting to tell this story our entire lives. <laughs> there was a time we sang at the White House. My um, God. Years ago, presidents ago, okay? And um, we were doing an arrangement of I Open My Mouth to the Lord. And, you know, here's the thing. We practice. We all three practice. Mariah and I usually will stick to what we practice. Stay maybe, in that box. Maybe change up a run here or there. Maybe change a note. Maybe. Maybe one note. But Joe, sir? Joe likes to get creative on the spot, okay? And this particular day... It didn't quite work out for him. It didn't quite work out for him. He got very creative on like maybe the third round of I Open My Mouth and it went left. It went left. We were singing a cappella. A cappella. And everybody was staring. And at us. all three of us were laughing at this point. We couldn't. Now, he was like, I open no. my mouth to the Lord <laughs> and I won't. We were like, literally, we couldn't contain ourselves. Nobody was singing. I know that the people were like, they started what? walking off. It just. <laughs> You know, wasn't the best time and in my I, career. I will say Jojo is, <clears throat> he's very good at improvising. Usually 99% of the time it works out in his favor. He tries new things and just goes for it and it's great. Absolutely. But that 1%, that 1%. <laughs> I mean, when it's bad, it's bad. Day. I'd be like, Joe, I, we didn't practice this. <laughs> we didn't do that. <laughs> first of all, first of all, <laughs> First of all, you throwing us off because we're not expecting it, so we both be like. Now we're all responsible because you wanted to go off. And then we're it. messing up. You're messing up. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Oh but you God. know, those things, as as bad as it sounds, it literally makes me love them more. Cause yeah. I be weak. I I mean weak. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't expect to laugh this hard during the interview. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that thing was good to me. We go back, and I want to say their names. I need to give props out. Jessica Fox, Joseph Clark, and Mariah Hargrove met singing background for a local artist. We're here to perform a medley <laughs> of We Shall Overcome, and Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Please, take it away, JoJo and Brianna. It was 
beautifully old school. And I think your voices, your harmonies, your chemistry, I'm in a good mood, so thank you. Thank you, Sophia. For him to continue up through to this day, I'm 100% behind, I put 100% behind him. My work wasn't in vain. That by helping him to climb the ladder best that I could, I just feel so good for him. I'm very proud of you. Very proud of him. There is a sparkle that Joe has, you know, in his smile, um, the way he greets people. He doesn't, he may not know you at all upon first meeting, but the way he had approaches you is as if he's always known you because it's like there's an openness with him. I've, I mean, I've just seen him in so many different realms of just life in general, even when he was a kid, like growing up directing choirs, he always had a love just for people and just for uh, really just trying to bring people out of the dark space. And he's always been that person. It's just something that's just always been on him, yeah. I think when people hear gifts, they automatically hear jo think Joe and think singing, but it's so much more than that. He's a writer, he's a, an arranger, but outside of music, he's an encourager. And I don't think he sees that. But that he's people, a preacher. People watch his life and they are encouraged by the things that he does. He's so transparent. Like he's gotten to a point in his life where he can be so transparent and naked before people that it doesn't bother him. But I don't think he realizes how many people get delivered from that. Mm, so many things to love about Joe. I have to choose one. <laughs> okay. Um, Sometimes he'll look at something, he might not say anything, he doesn't need this big grand thank you or anything, but he'll see a need and be like, I got you, and do it on the back end. You know, I never have to ask, like he's, if he sees the need and he can help, like he'll do it. The most that I would ever hope for him and that I hope for everyone is that he's happy and that music always continues to shape his life and the lives of others because he is so good at it and because he is so authentic that he always knows the power his singing and his and his artistry have over others yeah. so joe's legacy if i if i had to choose a legacy for joe it would be music just plain and simple music because he's a writer He's an arranger, he's a singer, amazing vocalist, amazing vocalist, director, and he has the ability to pull gifts out of people through his vocal coaching, just through his encouraging in general. And some of the people that he's coached, like I have heard them, and when he's done with them, I'm just like, is that the same person? Like, what? You can help me sing too? And he tells me no, but you know. Good, let's go to Ray. Yes, good job, Elise. That's a moment of rest. You may be, you may be like, oh, what? No, I'm still singing. Yes, but you're not singing in the stratosphere. You're not in the sky right now. So when you have moments where you come down, those are moments of rest. I know. Open it up. I know. Open up. I know. There we go. There we go. There we go. I know what we start kissing about. Thank God never going to be one thing but I mean his arrangements are incredible and what what he hears and I've seen him do this all the way through high school and all the way through his young adult life the, the arrangements are just incredible they're so clever I've always been impressed by that I mean I've pretty much heard a judge Simon say that on America's Got Talent I'm like I'm so glad that you recognize that Joe sees he's a manifester above all he sees it he works for it and he gets it. Joe literally has faith in what he can do and I've never seen him fail at it, but I've seen him have faith. So I think the legacy will be just to have faith in your future because he definitely does. I agree, music, but I think Joe haven't even tapped into the part of the legacy that people want to remember. And I really, really think once he started ministering the word, <laughs> that brother is going to touch some lives. 
and uh, I'm waiting for it. Maybe that'll be his legacy, a prophetic psalmist. There we yeah, go. so it's all We're we going to mix it together because <laughs> I want my answer to be right. <laughs> so, JoJo, don't stop. Keep pursuing. Please be resilient. Keep your faith and find what it is that you're looking for. You have no idea uh, the lives you have touched, man. You have no idea uh, the blessing that you have been to everyone who's had the ability to cross paths with you. In this 30th year of your life, I'm drawn to the number three because it's a symbol of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to remember that as you journey through this next phase of your life, that the Trinity is always with you. Joe, thank you. Literally, thank you for everything. I came from a very, very, very rough and different background. You never judge me for that. You have come a long way and the change in your life. I can also see that God is working in you. If I had to name a hero, any hero, and if I had to name who was my hero here on earth, um, I've told you this before and I'll tell you publicly, you are my hero. You took somebody who didn't have confidence enough to think she'd even be good enough to get in your choir. To know that not only did you think that my voice was good enough, but that I too was good enough for more than what I was used to because God knows you have changed my mindset about life. I pray that this year that you are able to continue living your dream, um, manifesting what you want to happen in your life, reach all your goals. Joseph Bernard Clark, you are so talented and so just amazing at what you do, but even more than that, you have a heart of gold that is important and that is worthy of love and acceptance and all of the beautiful things in this world, and I hope you never forget that. Joe, I want to encourage you to just keep being you, um, keep developing and learning who you are, especially to God. And don't you ever forget where you came from. Everywhere the soles of your feet tread, you will inherit. So be careful where you walk. Be mindful where you walk. Be mindful where you go. And that you will continue to be the example of love um, and passion that the world needs. And the best is yet to come. Josa, but but, <laughs> um, I love you so much and so much differently than anyone that I've ever loved in my life. And once you continue to reveal your gifts to yourself, you're going to realize that you are great. You are great and nobody can stop you, son. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for showing me it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't have to be this way. Let me show you something better and that's all you've ever done for me is show me better than what I'm used to. I'll never forget that. You are my brother. You are my friend. You are my business partner. And I'm proud of you. I am so proud of you. Just continue to believe in yourself, continue to encourage people, continue to love, and remind yourself that it's okay to not be okay sometimes, and it's okay to make mistakes because God is a God of grace. So remember that in this new season of your life. You're gonna get to see everything you wanna see, Broadway, whatever it is that you want and it's coming to you in so many different forms, and you deserve it. You work hard enough for it. You do. Happy birthday. I love you. Love you, son. I love you. We love you so much. Yes, we do. I love you. 